You do give your character that wide-eyed innocence, though. I, 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 she possesses that. I'm not sure that I give it to her. I think she gives it to me. Right. <laughs> yes. Right. You were able to, to meet the nun. I, I think it's Sister Peggy, isn't it, that, uh, on whom your character is based? Yes, yes. It's Sister, Sister Peggy, who was Sister James when she uh, was teaching John Patrick Shanley. Right. Yes. How was that helpful to you? It was extremely helpful, um, not only to get a sense of her humanity but, um, and, and her personality, but she, she really um, gave me a window into what it was like at that time to be a nun in the 60s. What was her calling? Why, why did she make that choice? Uh, how did her family react? Um, just all of those little intimate details that I would not have known without access to her and to uh, the fellow sisters of charity who opened themselves us to, up to us so, so graciously. Right. Philip Seymour Hoffman was talking about the, the sides of the triangle and how you obviously uh, are caught between yes. the, the two. You know, how, do, how does each um, Father Flynn and Sister Aloysius represent the, the, the different leanings, I suppose, of the church at that at that time. Well, uh, Sister Aloysius very much represents the past and and, and hanging on to uh, discipline and structure and tradition. And um, although uh, Father Flynn is, is about those things, he sees this new time, this new time in the world, as an opportunity for the church to to be more accessible and for people to see the church as part of their family as opposed to uh, an, an, an something that's very isolated from them, to invite them in and make this a warm place as opposed to a disciplinary, scary, to make God warm again and to make, uh, to make it about love again instead of about stark discipline and, and obedience, you know. So we're, we're stuck between the past and the future. And, 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 you know, somewhere in the middle is where it probably, it probably landed. Right. On my head, on my yeah, <laughs> on my character's poor little bonnet, yeah, right. <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, that's what they represent in my mind. Right. Um, in terms of, I, I know Philip Seymour Hoffman and Meryl Streep work together. Um, the confrontation scene, I gather, had a bit of an impact on you as well, did it? Absolutely. That is a very long scene, um, in, in in the best way, in, in the sense that. It took three days to shoot, and to be in that. Um, uh, are you speaking of the one at the end? I'm sorry, or the tea no, scene? No, the the tea scene. The tea yeah, scene. The, okay. The real confrontation. <laughs> the, the, the first, yes. Yeah. The the okay, good. Yeah. Um, it when my character, when Sister James, shows up, she's she thinks she knows what it's about. But she doesn't want it to be about that, so I think she's somebody who very much enforces her will and says, okay, this is not going to be about this. This is going to be about the Christmas pageant. Great, okay. Like, I, I don't know Sister Aloysius' plan. I only know that there, she has definitely put a plan together and it starts to, it, it starts to reveal itself to me during the scene as well. Mm. So um, that's a really, it's a very strange and intense place to put yourself for three days in that place of tension and, and heightened suspense and, and discomfort and regret and uh, you know it's just she just doesn't want to be there and it, she it does has not a, it want had to a be there. physical effect on you did it yes <laughs> it's <was> quite nauseating <laughs> really yes it was very I just felt so it's, it's it's something I so identify with I think we've all had those moments of, of being somewhere we did not want to be with information and and all, she she started it in a way and she knows that and she can't take it back and she doesn't know was it the right thing to do you know she's she's she really just wants it to end right. <laughs> she's looking for any way for it all to end I imagine as an actor it's quite exhilarating in an exhausting kind of way of course of course it is it's wonderful and, and exhilarating and and challenging and, and um, especially Sister James is, is such an observer she really wants she wants to know the truth and so she spends that scene not only in her own state of discomfort but in a state of exploration which allowed me to to really um, appreciate 
uh, Philip and Merrill's performance even more so in that scene because I was able to be silent and be a witness. Right. How does the element of doubt uh, manifest itself in each of the characters and, and complicate the equation here? Well, with, um, with Sister James, it makes her doubt herself. Uh, it makes her doubt her sense of, of truth. And it makes her, um, makes her uncertain. She's someone who enters feeling quite certain and, and quite believing in, in, in not only in herself, but in faith and in God and, and in the people who have, who have given the same vow she's given. She, she believes that they're all in it for the same reasons, you know, and as, as, we, as we grow and as Sister Aloysius becomes a heavier weight on her and as, and as Father Flynn becomes more of a pull, she's just torn apart. And that, that is what doubt does to her. It just tears apart her sense of self right. and her sense of the world. The, the setting in the 1960s um, is, is a great way to introduce the changes in society, and not only with the racial element, but I gather with the women within the church. Yes. And, you know, the, um, I guess they're, they're tempted by uh, leanings in, in both those directions. I think, yeah. um, <clears throat> pardon, I'm sorry, I don't... The... Oh, d how, how the setting in the 60s is yeah. able to you know, bring in the change with, with, with the first black student and then... Absolutely, and know, Vatican II was about to hierarchy. happen, which sort of restructured yeah. things. But it is a very... I, I think what's important to understand when, when watching this film um, is is to understand the nature of isolation of these of, of the nuns. Sister James has nobody else to talk to. Mm. She is um, completely isolated. You're not allowed to leave your, the convent. Um, you're not allowed to speak to a priest outside of um, outside of confession. So the scene in the garden with Father Flynn is completely forbidden. Mm. And and speaking up, speaking against your your um, superior is completely against your vows. You took a vow of obedience. Mm -hmm. So this whole experience for her is just not at all what she expected. Right. And, and I think women in that time and women in the church at that time, um, had, they really only had each other. Right. And, and that was, um, that's why she had to, she has to listen to Sister Aloysius. She can't go, she can't go above her, you know. That's her first. It's her first in command. It's like the army. Right. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I don't know if you if you read, and I was surprised to read that even Mother Teresa, uh, in her diaries, expressed to having great moments of doubt in her faith. I I, I yeah. believe that. Yeah. Yeah, I really believe that. Especially, I think it's very natural. Especially, I mean, Mother Teresa did she to see what she saw in the world and the evil that she saw and the, the great suffering that she saw, that would, that would place anybody's faith in question, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah.